this was not called Frag Android in and today I'm going to be checking out the new Nexus 4 from uh, Google or from LG in India. Now this phone comes at a price of about 25,600 rupees in the market and is available only in the 16 gigabyte version. If you've been following the news, uh, the white color has also gone on sale for exactly the same price and exactly the same configuration. It's just the white color. Now the Nexus Phones are essentially Google's own birth child. Uh, they are uh, designed to represent the way Android was meant to be by Google. And uh, the Nexus 4 is the latest version out of that. In anticipation of Google launching the Nexus 4 in India, it has been about six, seven months uh, since the Nexus 4 was destined to arrive in India, but it was officially made available in the month of May. Now Google is also set to launch uh, new devices on the 10th of June at its next press conference. Whether or not they'll update a new Nexus device for a smartphone version uh, is currently unknown but as far as we're concerned the Nexus 4 is available in India. It's available at a good price and uh, let's go on with the review and see if it's actually worth the whole effort. The first thing we're going to check out is build quality. Now the Nexus 4, the minute you pick it up, uh, resembles a very premium looking smartphone. Uh, the first thing that it will remind you of is the design quality of uh, the iPhone 4S or the iPhone 4 where you had a glass back as well as a glass front on the device. Uh, now this device has uh, exactly the same sort of design element. You have a unibody plastic shell uh, in the center versus the metal shell on the iPhone and uh, you have dual glass on either side. Now both the glass on either side is a Gorilla Glass 2. So you get a good amount of protection from the device as well as a premium design for the LG Nexus 4. Now, if you talk about the front of the device, you have a 4.7 inch display, uh, which is a 720p display. So you get 1280 by 720p in terms of resolution. Uh, you can also see this notification light or the sensor for the front, uh, which is fantastic, which is over here. Uh, looks really nice. It also keeps blinking in the middle. You have a front-facing camera which is over here which is only pretty decent. You can use it for uh, view IP services or a bunch of self-portraits which you won't be too proud of. Uh, you have an earpiece over here. The screen itself is 4.7 inches diagonally and it does use up some of the real estate from the screen to give you uh, the buttons at the bottom. Essentially the overall uh, width of the screen is 768 instead of 720. On the right of the device is the power button. Now if you look at the top of the device, uh, you can see the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack which is located over here. And you also have a secondary noise cancelling microphone uh, on the left of the top if you look at it from the back side. So on the right side is the volume rocker and on the bottom is the micro USB charging data syncing port along with the two service screws and uh, the one main microphone for the device. If you turn it around to the back, uh, you have the 8 megapixel camera along with the LED flash. On uh, retail versions, you'll see a Nexus logo over here. You can see this really nice shimmery back panel, uh, which looks really nice. Some people really don't like it, but we kind of like it. Uh, you can see the LG logo at the bottom and you have uh, the main speakerphone at the bottom right over here as well. Let's now move on along to the Nexus experience. Now, Nexus devices, like I said earlier, are loaded with a completely vanilla Android version. So if we go into the device over here, uh, you'll be able to see that this device is actually running Android 4.2.2 and it is a completely vanilla Android experience uh, where if I go into this you can see we have Jelly Bean 4.2.2 can I burst this bean? Yes I can get rid of all the beans from the screen anyway that's not why I'm here the idea is to show you that uh, the interface is really fast and responsive and uh, it's really a lot better to use than any device that comes with a custom user interface. Now, devices like Samsung and HTC come with their own user interface. So Samsung has TouchWiz, HTC has Sense, Sony has Timescape, and most of these companies have their own custom UI uh, that has been put on top of Android that somewhat takes away from the experience of pure Android so you don't get the exact features that Google wants you to get. Now this device, the Nexus 4, also comes with an unlockable bootloader. So you can simply put in a simple command on uh, your terminal and simply say fastboot, unlock bootloader, and the device will get unlocked. Now so once you talk about a completely vanilla Android, you can see we still have the customizable home panels over here. 
Now you can simply customize them by holding down on the screen. You can change the wallpaper. If you want to add a widget, you can simply go into the widget section over here, uh, scroll through, add a widget, drop a widget, simply pick it up and throw it into a place where there is some space available and you can drop a widget over here. What you can also do is if you want to drop a shortcut to an application, you can just simply pick it up and drop that in the home screen as well. If you come down to the dialer, you can see it's a very stock dialer, no customizations here. Of course, you don't have anything. You can go into all sorts of uh, call settings. Uh, you have your call records and your contacts over there. If I go into messaging as well, you can see that uh, we have a very vanilla keyboard and I did some typing over there. Make sure you visit iGAN. But uh, you have that keyboard. Now if I convert it to landscape, you have uh, that keyboard as well. A landscape keyboard. Again, it's stock. You can replace it with lots of other keyboard options available on the Google Play Store. Now somebody rightly mentioned uh, that we've actually stopped talking about the phone quality or the phone calling capability of devices when we do review these devices. So I'm actually going to take this time out and between the user interface, I'm going to talk about the phone call capability the network strength and how we fared uh, with uh, the Nexus 4. Now the Nexus 4 has a very stable network connection. We saw great antenna performance throughout our usage of the Nexus 4. Uh, we also felt that the call quality was indeed really good. So you can really listen to the person calling in, uh, whereas the mic also picks out sounds, the noise cancellation microphone, not as good as we'd like it to be, but it does do some noise cancellation. So you do get a crystal clear conversation when you're talking to a person, provided that your network strength is good enough, uh, provided that you're not in a basement or anything like that. Uh, but call quality is fantastic and uh, we're really happy and we appreciate the fact that somebody mentioned this out. As a phone, the Nexus 4 is excellent. Now moving along to smartphone features, when we checked out the Google Nexus 4 or the LG Nexus 4 last time uh, we were running a previous version of Android and uh, there was a big problem with Chrome in terms of scrolling through and you can see uh, that has been resolved with an update to 4.2.2 and uh, everything is smooth and silky now uh, of course I can scroll through I can scroll down and up a uh, very fluid interface uh, you do have lots of options uh, flash is now disabled in uh, Jelly Bean so you can't have a uh, flash content of course you can install lots of tweaks uh, to allow flash uh, so that option is still available to people who are interested in flash content honestly flash does consume a lot of battery and it does heat up the phone a lot so you might want to stay away from it but if you do want it you can still get it talking about heating up if you use this device over prolonged times uh, you will see that it starts to heat up from this area that's where the cracking problem happens if the phone heats up a lot or if you leave it out in the sun the glass on the back starts to crack from uh, the flash area or around the camera and uh, this is a very common issue with the Nexus 4 a lot of people have faced that we have not faced that as of now or as yet uh, but if we do we will uh, mention that in the future but it gets really hot almost uncomfortably hot from this area and um, owners might want to be aware that if the device does start to get hot from this area uh, they might want to pull back from whatever they're doing that's causing the device to heat up so much now the lock screen also allows you to directly access the camera from over here so you can scroll to the right to access the camera you can also add widgets on the left so i've added google now widgets over here uh, of course the device comes with a jelly bean so you can expect google now out of the box so you get google now i have my stocks the weather over there i can also add more cards to show up at the bottom uh, currently nothing wants to show up on my screen uh, but if I go into settings, I go into Google now, I can see that I can turn on all these things, birthdays, what new movies are out there, uh, new TV episodes, new video games, everything. I can get all those updates. As long as I'm updating them on Google+, Plus, everything starts to show up in my Google now. Let's move on to the camera. The camera on the Nexus 4 has been uh, criticized quite, quite a lot. When Google launched the Nexus 4, uh, they really emphasized on the camera. And honestly, it's an average camera. You can't really expect it to do a lot. Uh, but it has been understated in most of the reviews that I've been looking through uh, over a period of time. Now, people have really doubted the camera. In fact, when the camera was, or actually when the device was on a lower version of Android, we felt that the camera was not that good. But after the latest update, we feel that the camera is really performing well. Uh, you get great uh, color saturation, you get accurate colors, uh, video quality is also good. So we're pretty happy with the way that uh, the camera is uh, taking pictures as well as videos. Now you do have a little bit of options in the camera as well. So you, you simply by holding down your finger, 
Uh, you can go into HDR uh, shooting modes. You can also switch to the front facing camera. If you go over here, you can uh, set your exposure compensation minus two or plus two. If you don't want to do that, you can jump directly into settings. So if I go into settings, you can choose uh, whether or not to have your location stored, uh, whether or not uh, what your picture size is going to be, and you can also select your shooting modes or scene modes. So if you want an action shot, a night shot, a sunset, or a party, uh, you can do that from here. If you want to switch to a Photosphere, you can just tap on this button, go into this, and uh, you can start taking uh, 3D panoramas, um, actually 360 panoramas, so you can just create a sphere out of your room or out of the area that you're in. It's somewhat decent, it's not the best experience that you would want from a panorama app. Uh, if you go into standard panorama, you can take a horizontal panorama. If you go into video, again, you get the same kind of options. You can switch to the front facing camera. You can go into settings, set your video mode. You can also do some time lapse video. Uh, you can also set your white balance. I usually tend to keep it on auto, but if you're indoors, you can use incandescent. It actually uh, gives you a little more accurate uh, video quality. So the camera is basic. You can, of course, replace it with lots of camera applications. Uh, it does really work well with Instagram. Uh, so if you are, uh, again, trying to get this device and want to use Instagram, this can be an excellent uh, camera for Instagram. It's actually pretty quick. Uh, in fact, let me give you a quick sample. So I have my Lumix GF1 over here. And uh, if I want to click a picture, I'm just going to give you a quick sample of uh, really how well uh, the device is capable of focusing. So I just click that picture over there. Now, the funny thing is uh, that I can't go to that picture without going into gallery. So let me jump into gallery, go into camera pictures, and you can see really how well composed that picture is. Uh, really good quality of focus. And it, this is pretty close to the subject as well. So uh, even though it's almost like a macro shot, but uh, really nice uh, composition on the picture, even though it was shot indoors with not a lot of light. Uh, this one was clicked with flash, that's my pet over there. But this, the kind of pictures that uh, we've been taking with this, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the kind of pictures that have been coming out with the Nexus 4. So you won't really be disappointed with the camera. Now, I've not been using this device for quite a long time and I've not been stressing out the device at all. And it's already started to get warm from this area. So like I mentioned earlier, this can be a significant problem because the device starts to crack and uh, LG may or may not choose to cover that in the warranty. So you may want to be careful uh, with the fact that it heats up. Now everything is stock Android. So your app drawer, uh, your uh, widget drawer, everything is custom, is not custom. It's completely vanilla and uh, it's really gonna be a very simple flat Android experience. Now if you do want to customize uh, the Nexus 4, you can root it really easily. Uh, you can uh, install custom ROMs, lots of ROMs out there. If you want to put TouchWiz on there, you want to put Sense on there, if you want to put uh, Timescape on there, you can put any sort of user interface thanks to a lot of customizations that is happening in the Nexus 4 scene. You can also overclock the device uh, to run up to 1.9 gigahertz now. So that is something that you might want to look at. Uh, but the Nexus 4 itself uh, is pretty difficult to control in terms of heat. So why would you want to take it up to 1.9 gigahertz? That might actually blow out the glass on the back. So if you want to hold on to the device, I say that you underclock it, bring it down to about 1.2 gigahertz or even 1 gigahertz, and then undervolt it uh, so that it's, it saves up your battery life and it does not heat up the device. I saw that if I undervolted the Nexus 4 and if I uh, reduce the clock, to about 1.2 gigahertz, uh, this device uh, was running wonderfully and uh, the kind of quality uh, in terms of experience was not battered a lot. Uh, I did experience uh, gaming difficulties on uh, Nova 3, uh, but uh, my battery life improved by about 90 minutes of uh, full on-screen usage and um, the heating issue was very minimal. So you might want to consider that underclocking and undervolting your Nexus 4. In terms of customizations, in terms of uh, phone usage, in terms of uh, the experience, everything remains smooth. Uh, even though you keep using the device, you've experienced little or no lag uh, with the Nexus 4 over a period of time. And uh, for the price, I believe it is a great deal. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the screen over here. Now, the screen on the Nexus 4 uh, is essentially identical to the screen on the LG Optimus G. But the difference on the LG Optimus G is uh, that the screen is completely fused with the touch mechanism or the touch digitizer. 
So the screen looks a lot more vivid, a lot deeper, and uh, the icons and everything appear on the screen a lot better on the Optimus G, which to me looks really fantastic. And I wonder why LG did not do that uh, with the Nexus 4. The screen has a slightly reduced viewing angles as well when compared to the Optimus G. The screen looks a little brighter uh, compared to the Optimus G. So these are things that we feel that LG could have fixed with the Nexus 4 and they really have not. And that is the slight disappointment that I have. The other difference is that uh, the Optimus G has a 13 megapixel camera, which is definitely a lot better than the camera on uh, the Nexus 4. And uh, the Optimus G unfortunately uh, lacks wireless charging, which the Nexus 4 has if you buy the wireless charging dock, but uh, the Optimus G has a micro SD card compartment and 32 gigabyte of storage. So again, you get lots of expandability options. And one wonderful thing that you still get with Nexus is the ability or is the TV out animation uh, that happens when you turn off the screen, which I absolutely love uh, on Nexus devices. Uh, you saw it first on, I think the Nexus S. Uh, it was uh, Google's way of <laughs> giving you uh, that experience, um, they've given that with uh, the Optimus, with the Nexus 4 as well. In terms of performance, we found that gaming on uh, the Nexus 4 is really fast and impressive. Let me give you a quick demonstration of that. Nexus 4 is actually capable of running all sorts of games. Uh, for games that are incompatible with uh, the ROM as stock, uh, you can easily root the Nexus 4 and enable those games on the device as well. I've, I've tried almost all sorts of heavy games and everything seems to work just brilliantly with zero lag almost out of the box. Uh, I'm pretty impressed uh, with the way uh, the Nexus 4 has been built. It really puts you into doubt why other companies are not able to give you impressive hardware at lower prices. So you can see uh, that uh, gaming is pretty responsive. I've tried playing Nova 3, I've tried playing Asphalt, I tried playing uh, Modern Combat 4. Almost all sorts of games uh, work uh, really well on uh, the Nexus 4. I seriously face no issues uh, with gaming with the kind of performance uh, that you'd want from this device. Uh, you can also go onto your office applications, so you can run office applications on this device as well. So if you're trying to do some office work uh, on the device, you can do that as well. You can download tons and tons of uh, document processing applications uh, from the Google Play Store, and uh, whether it's docs to go or Dragon Office or anything, uh, these apps can be downloaded. There are some that are free as well, so you can do your processing, document processing on the go. You get lots of great email options. Uh, you, of course, get Gmail. You get 15 gigabytes of Google Drive storage on the cloud as well. You get wonderful new Hangouts uh, that allow you to uh, converse with your friends, send files, uh, do FaceTime-like video chats. Um, essentially, tries to bring together an ecosystem uh, that Google intended for users to experience with Android devices, which actually got lost in custom skins from Samsung or HTC or even LG for that matter, Google gives you that experience off the shelf. Now the Nexus 4, in conclusion, I feel honestly is the best available device for the price of about 25,000 rupees. If you truly want to experience Android, if you truly want to play with it, and if you are open to customizing it because if you are anybody who likes to play with or if you've played with computers in the past, if you like to tweak and skin and customize the experience to make it your own, you can do that with the Nexus 4. But, and this is a big if and but, if you don't have time, if you're a person who's a working individual who doesn't have time to customize the interface, I would recommend that you do not go in for the Nexus 4 and in fact go in for something 
uh, which comes ready out of the box because you will not have that time to play around with the Nexus 4. I felt that I had to really push through and uh, spend time on the device. In fact, every time you pick it up, you wish that something uh, like another interface was on it. So every time you look at somebody with a Samsung device, you're going to feel that, oh, wait, my Nexus 4 should have it. And it can have it. It's probably a software implementation. It's probably a ROM that you can install. But the fact that you want all those things onto the device sometimes makes it difficult for you to do that because you have to really read through uh, things if you don't know how to root and customize the interface or you have to pay to get it done and you don't have your phone for some time. So these are things that uh, you will need to trade off with if you go in for the Nexus 4. Uh, if you are a person, if you are a person who has lots of time on their hands, uh, likes to play with uh, their devices, likes to, uh, you know, honestly uh, screw with them, then the Nexus 4 is an excellent device. And if you don't want all those features, if you feel that you want just a great phone, uh, that does uh, run a lot of applications, uh, then the Nexus 4 is also for you. So you truly need to decide if you're uh, uh, the Nexus 4 category person or you're not the Nexus 4 category person. I feel that as an experience, it actually grows on you and you get to learn everything uh, one step at a time. Everything doesn't come into your face in one go. For example, if you open the new Galaxy S4, uh, the minute you power on the device, you need to set up a hundred things. With the Nexus 4, the minute you power on the device, you get the device. So. You don't really play around with anything. You get to use the Nexus 4. To check out our detailed review on the Nexus 4, visit iGAN.in. And if you have any questions or queries, uh, you can leave them on the review page of iGAN, which is where I will be able to respond to them. So visit iGAN, uh, check the review page out, and leave a comment there or a question there. I'll try and answer it out for you guys. You can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash iGAN, youtube.com slash iGAN TV. This has been Bharat Nagpur for iGAN Networks. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.